It does not bring me a single lick of joy saying this today, but macOS Catalina has been sort of a huge dumpster fire for me. Maybe my memory's just bad, but I think this could be one of the worst macOS upgrades I've ever had. Obviously, I'll get into the specifics of it in today's video, but something I just wanted to disclose from the beginning is that a lot of the things I may be going through could be individual to the apps that are, you know, giving me issues. It may not be just the overall OS that's the problem, and it's also very, very specific. So remember, when I'm saying macOS Catalina sucks for me, I'm not saying it sucks for everyone. If you've upgraded to Catalina and you're enjoying it, I'm very, very happy for you. In fact, Jealous, would you like to swap computers? Because I'm on the latest public version of macOS Catalina, but I'm also on the iMac Pro, which I'm sure handles things in a whole different way than a lot of the machines you guys are running. So I'm just going to complain a little bit today because that's what the internet's good for. You may have solutions, and if you do find solutions, Solutions to some of the problems I'm having, keep them to yourself, okay? I I'll figure them out later. Let's begin. <laughs> So as a whole, macOS Catalina brought a lot of somewhat interesting features. I mean, it wasn't really a big year in the first place. For one, they broke apart iTunes, so now we have the podcast app, the Apple TV app, and of course now just Apple Music, and when you plug in your iPhone or iPad, it all does that through Finder now. So there's good intentions involved with macOS Catalina, but one thing that did start annoying me is I discovered that some podcasts started automatically downloading, which when you're dealing with the file size, is that I am and every single gig on your computer counts that yeah when they start like auto downloading podcasts that I have set up on my phone because they're like hey we've got the podcasts app on here now I was kind of like eh, stop so I had to tell it make sure you don't do that please don't download new episodes just stream that stuff so I don't know why they did that by default but the other dumb thing they added is screen time just like we have on iOS which is supposed to help your digital well-being except it's not really measured by activity so something a little bit different about using your Mac is a lot of the time you just kind of have it on but you're not necessarily using it. In screen time oftentimes is counting the amount of minutes you have like apps open even if you're not necessarily utilizing them. It just means that your Mac is like sitting in that windows on the screen. They're like, oh, you're spending a lot of time on that app but you're not. You could be getting up going away because I don't really feel like putting the computer to sleep every time I'm not exactly interacting with it. Maybe I should, I don't know. It's just the way I've been using Macs for a long time. So the screen time feels feature was like nifty but kind of useless simultaneously and may I also mention the amount of times you know for the sake of security and privacy again good intentions they want to make sure you know what you're downloading or who's requesting a download at any time and especially when other apps want to utilize different apps or parts of your system they have to now ask you permission for that every time it's like would you like to allow downloads from this website I've downloaded things from this website every single day it's just Google Drive or iCloud Drive it's like do you want to allow this download? That's why I clicked on it. Okay, just kind of a remember all checkbox maybe would help. The fact that I'm still on the latest version and every time I download something from some program that I do regularly, it still has to ask, are you sure? Are you want to allow a download from this site? I know they're probably trying to prevent accidental downloads or, or virus or malware of some kind, but that wasn't really a big issue with me in the past. With Mojave and everything, I never had issues with like a bunch of accidental things getting downloaded or malware. Whoops! Just kind of slipped on the machine there's probably some system preference I can go change I'm just saying these are the default options and they're kind of annoying the one annoying thing is I do a lot of live streaming both on my iMac Pro and my Mac mini and since updating both of them to Mac OS Catalina OBS just doesn't work anymore at first I thought well maybe it's because OBS could be a 32-bit app and I know Mac OS Catalina is no longer supporting those which kind of sucks but I get it you know they're trying to move everybody up to 64-bit which has been out for a long time but after after looking it up, OBS is a 64-bit application. Unless I'm missing something or they're labeling it incorrectly, I see no reason why this shouldn't work. I see no reason why OBS just instantly quits on accident every time I try to open it. So the way I've been live streaming now is every single time I want to open OBS, I have to run it through a terminal command, which is a very unnecessary middle step that I didn't have to do before. And I've tried reinstalling OBS several times. Again, I've tried it on older versions of OBS, the latest version of OBS, which I've been using for years, and all of a sudden,
Cloud and Mac OS Catalina, OBS, they just, they don't get along, they don't like each other, that kind of sucks, that gets annoying. And at first Final Cut Pro was working pretty okay with Mac OS Catalina, I couldn't complain, but in the latest update, now it's quite frustrating to me because it's freezing up and lagging on me quite a bit. Of course this happens right after I do, you know, my video on, I don't need a Mac Pro because my iMac Pro is working just fine. That's when Apple's like, send the kill viruses, make his Mac start sucking now, then he'll think about getting a cheese grater. I'm not getting a cheese grater, by the way. I'm just saying Apple wants me to think about it. I can feel them knocking on my head and I'm like, hey, I'm not getting it. Doesn't matter how buggy this thing gets, I'm not getting a Mac Pro because Final Cut was working flawlessly for years. And then in the latest update with Catalina, on the latest version of Final Cut, again, this could be an individual Final Cut Pro problem, but hey, it's still Apple. So mm. when I drag things into Final Cut all the time, it starts freezing. In the past, I've oftentimes had to export lots of audio files through Final Cut when we take our old live streams and export the audio. And now anytime I try to export an audio file with Final Cut, it instantly freezes. I've tried restarting, I've tried creating new projects, I've tried downloading different files, and every time I try to export an audio file, it freezes up which was not a problem before. Even in the first version of Catalina, it worked pretty well, actually. But may I add that the first version of Catalina was also very, very bumpy. There was a lot of issues I had with it, like Apple ID notifications keep popping up. You gotta sign in with your Apple ID. I've already signed in with it, and don't get me wrong, I'm aware they fixed this issue, but the fact that they still had simple bugs like that on the first initial launch of Catalina was quite frustrating, and maybe I just have a bad memory, but I don't recall previous public macOS upgrades being this bumpy. Maybe they were, but in the past, usually I was very excited for new macOS upgrades. I was happy to get a new suite of features and apps and have things work better and things like that, but this time it's just been like, oh god, I hope this feature works today, or is it gonna suddenly stop working? I may be taking it out on the wrong people. Maybe this is not a macOS Catalina problem, but I don't know. My hope is that I can just encourage people who work at Apple to be like, hey, let's test these things out a little bit more before we send them out, especially when so many people rely on these machines for their livelihood and their job. And a lot of my job is time sensitive about making content, you know, as quickly and as efficiently as I can. So when I keep running into Final Cut freezes and, oh, now we can't handle the footage you've been throwing at us. Maybe my iMac Pro is just getting old and it's starting to show signs of wear potentially, but I don't know, it doesn't feel like it. It's still not blaring fans on the back and most of the iMac Pro runs certainly fine. So I'm still thinking it's a software issue that I run into so many Final Cut holdups and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things things I enjoy about macOS Catalina. One of my favorite things is that when you want to change permissions for a certain app or something, it can now confirm it by having you double tap the Apple Watch, which is super handy from a security point of view. It's like, hey, we need confirmation. And before you would have to enter your official password. Now you just have to double tap the side button on your Apple Watch, which is really cool. Those products are so different, you know, desktop to watch. I love the way those two interact. I love the way that when I take screenshots now, I can just drag them directly into my Final Cut library. That saves me a lot of time, whereas in Mojave you had to go find the actual screenshot in Finder, you couldn't just drag the preview. Small grievances are that the podcast and Apple TV apps, they don't really feel very fluidly designed. They feel kind of cheap compared to how well optimized they are on the iPad. So when they're like, hey, we're going to port apps over to the Mac, they don't feel very utilized. They feel kind of sloppy. They feel kind of last minute. Like, eh, there, it's a Mac app. You're welcome. Maybe taking better advantage of the UI so that Windows can resize more appropriately and not just feel like iPad OS emulating. I know there's a lot of Apple sheep watching and maybe some of you are ticked off by what I have to say today, but it's just my hope that later this year we can get a new version of Mac OS that tries to address some of these issues we're having or hopefully future updates to Final Cut or OBS or the software as a whole can better utilize screen time so it knows what's you know, active usage of an app and not passive. Who knows, at this point, I might just switch over to the beta version of macOS Catalina because maybe it runs more reliably at this point. I don't know. Have you guys experienced many issues with Catalina? Has it been working okay with you? Feel free to let me know over on Twitter or join our Discord. But at the end of the day, just remember, I'm not switching to Windows because I've used Windows 10 in the past for prolonged periods of time and have had far worse issues with that. So no, the solution is not, Drew, you better switch to a PC. Tried that, did it, terrible. Terrible, even worse, even Mac OS at its worst was not Windows 10 at its best. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.